morning. This is, will be a quick tutorial about using KNN classifier on a different data set. So firstly, we are actually importing all the libraries as they are actually requiring in uh, plotting whatever the graphs we are actually wanting or we are wanting to read CSV or we might be doing some operations with the arrays. So for the arrays, we are actually importing NumPy for the reading of a particular file that is CSV, we are using pandas and then for plotting the, our graph, we will use the matplotlib. And the Seaborn is another library that is actually uh, used for uh, printing or say plotting beautiful graphs according to our data set. Now, firstly, uh, we were actually doing something like that. Uh, we were, uh, from the sklearn.data dataset, we were importing the make blob function, which actually creates a sample data set for us so that we can actually perform machine learning on that, but we don't need that. We will use that, use our own data set. So what I found is that uh, I found a new uh, data set that is actually diabetes.csv. I will actually put the link for that database in the description below. Uh, let me actually try to show you. Yeah, this is actually the database on which we will be actually performing our KNN classifier. And uh, firstly, you need to uh, go to that link, which I will be actually uh, showing in the description. And then you will go here and then you will uh, click on this raw and then it will actually show you the row file and then you can actually save that particular file by using control plus s and then you can just save it anywhere in your uh, uh, in your computer system and then what you need to do is that you will go here on your uh, collab and then you will upload this particular file here uh, by using this icon and then it this file will be actually uploaded here you can either use drive or you can upload it directly then copy path as you might already know and then you have to use the pandas or read csv function to actually use this particular file now it will be a quick tutorial so I will be not going into much of the details so then you will just paste the path here and then you will read the CSV now printing the whole data set using the data uh, we don't need uh, the print function for just printing one thing um, so yeah just uh, uh, typing data will actually print me whole data set I can either mm, uh, get the five first records or last record using the head and tail function as you might already know now uh, catching the X values X values you uh, already know in the diabetes data set as also covered in the previous videos uh, includes all the features other than outcome column and that's why I will just drop the outcome column from data using the data dot drop and the column name will be actually enclosed in square brackets with string uh, prop, with string type and then the axis will be supplied to one that is actually I wanna delete from column side so yeah the return value will be other data set uh, just leaving the outcome column and then it will be actually used there in the x uh, uh, variable and then I will just print out x dot head and then similarly I will catch the y Vari y variable to be uh, the outcome column and that's why I will get the y is equal to data dot, uh, data's outcome and then uh, I will actually import the min max scalar. So what's the problem in this particular data set is that we have different ranges. So we need to get the things into range. As you might be able to see, this is actually uh, something like zero point something, and this is going to be 148. So obviously glucose column will actually give you more effect in predicting the outcome, and that's what we don't want. We want equality, and that's why we will just scale everything to zero to one value, and that's why we will use a min-max scalar. What's the formula of min-max scalar? Is actually value minus min divided by max minus min. That's actually the scaling formula behind the scenes. So what we actually used to do, firstly from sklearn.preprocessing, we import the min-max scalar, and then scale Scalar, uh, we actually instantiate an object of that means min mass scalar by using min mass scalar and then these braces. Uh, this is something like a class and we get the object of that and from that object we might have different functionality in it like the fixed uh, fit transform and then in that fit transform we will supply our x variable which was if you remember containing all the features other than the outcome column and then we will get in return we will get a particular uh, scaled column values and we will get those values into, uh, into x. Uh, do we need to actually scale the y values also well no because the y values are already containing zero and one values and they just represent class there is nothing like range or something and uh, yeah uh, they are just output columns with the classification so we don't need anything like scaling yeah so we will just apply the scaling on the x now it is recommended highly recommended that you apply the scale before actually splitting into train test split because if you actually scale after train test split then uh, there might be difficulties for you so just a convention that you need to do it before mm, yeah so from the sklearn.model selection uh, you actually import the train test split and uh, from the, with the train test split as you might already know we will just mm, supply the x value variable then y variable then the test size will be 0 0.3 that is you want 30 percent for the test size and uh, the 70 percent for the training size then you actually supply the random state to be equal to one that is every time you run this collab network you are train test splitting shuffle will be same.
Now, it will actually return me x values and then y values. x values words train and then test and similarly y train and then y test. As you might already remember, you used to do first training and then do testing and that's why train comes before and then test comes after. And then you actually for the convention of x to y and then this is the way you can actually remember it. Now, you need to also import the k nearest neighbor classifier. So what's the name of this uh, uh, k nearest neighbor classifier in the sklearn library? From the sklearn's neighbor module, you actually import k, k neighbor classifier. So you can remember in such a way that k is actually capital, then n is also capital, and then classifier c also capital, that's all small. And then you need to supply the n neighbors is equal to one. Now what is this? The n neighbors is equal to 1 signify that you actually look at the nearest one data point to actually predict the outcome of uh, your particular test label, test uh, data. Means uh, if you are actually wanting, uh, means uh, yeah, it's kind of an example that you might look uh, someone's friend to actually judge something about him. Like whatever the friend will be like, then the person can be also the same, uh, something like that. Yeah, now you actually used to predict the values. Firstly, uh, firstly you need to actually fit your model. So for, you have instantiated the Kenya's neighbor into KNN. And then you actually fit the X train, fit it with X train and Y train. And then you actually predict it uh, with the KNN dot predict with the excess be being supplied in the behind the scenes. Excess will be actually used to predict the values. Mm, uh, okay, sorry, that's actually not the class, uh, not the uh, confusion metric. Okay, uh, so you actually just apply the excess and you will get the uh, predictions accordingly and then you can actually print those predictions by using Vibrid and here are all the predictions. Now what were the labels uh, in real? These were the actual labels which are voidest and then from the scalar.metrics we will just import confusion metrics and classification report for actually getting the evaluation records that what, how much good our model is performing as you might also notice from directly uh, direct result that it is not performing really good because we have just used one sample nearby to actually evaluate our or say predict for a particular test level so in the confusion matrix you will just supply the y test and y predict remember firstly you will supply the test label that were actual that were the actual labels and then you will supply the y predict that is what you have predicted in the in the classification report also. So what this confusion matrix does is that it actually prints a matrix like this. The diagonal ones are actually the true ones, which are actually calculated to be true, means right ones. And then this uh, uh, another diagonal is actually uh, your wrong predictions. Then what you actually used to do now? What was the aim of our uh, our this particular uh, collab is that we need to actually uh, we are actually trying to find the best k value to give me the best accuracy. So for that we will run a for loop that try every k value and get the best out of it. So yeah, with, we will instantiate the k nearest neighbor with that number of samples equal to y and the i is actually getting caught from that for loop and then we will just fit uh, the x train and y train in the same way to this particular new object and then we will get the prediction in the predi. Then in the error rate, we are actually appending the mean of that particular predict i is not equal to y test means for a particular instantiation of the k nearest neighbor. We are actually checking that how many of them are actually uh, not predicted rightly. So we are getting the mean of them through the np.mean function because np is actually uh, uh, num uh, referring to numpy and th uh, that allows us to do operations on array. Now, we have instantiated the uh, PLT's figure. PLT, what is P this PLT? PLT is actually nothing but the matplotlib. Mm, and we have uh, kept the figure size to be 10 along the x-axis and 06 along the y-axis. Now, uh, what we are doing is that for the x1, we are actually uh, putting it a range of 1 to say 39 and then, uh, okay, uh, and then we have the next one that is actually y to be, uh, we are supplying the y values to be say error rate and then these are just another parameters to actually verify your uh, graph that is actually color is equal to blue means that your line will be coming out to be blue, uh, means the points will come out to be blue with the line size to be uh, double hyphen and the marker size is actually set to 10 which will actually tell uh, that how what is the marker size of this particular uh, state and then you have the marker uh, marker face color is equal to red that will be actually shown uh, to fill the marker and then the mark you can also supply a lot of markers uh, options that how what is the shape of your marker then you can actually just set the titles uh, title by using plt.title and similarly for the plt.x label that is what you want as to be your x label and the y labels similarly mm, and then uh, here i have found that the uh, uh, around okay i have actually run 
run this uh, particular for loop for the 40 uh, till 40 so what I got is that uh, okay oh, just a second yeah it is actually getting uh, the best value to be somebody here right it is actually getting the best value to be somebody here let uh, so it's actually seems to be uh, 11 uh, let, okay I have not run this color file so otherwise you might also check with the np dot argument function that will actually return you the index of the lowest value and then you actually do what is uh, uh, again I actually trained the k nearest uh, instantiated the k nearest neighbor with the k n neighbors to be equal to 13 and then fit uh, tray x train and extra to actually get my best model this will be actually my best model uh, because I'm actually supplying the best k, uh, k n neighbor value to be 13 because I have actually got that from that particular graph which I have actually done earlier so yes then I can again uh, just uh, print the my confusion matrix and classification report so in this way you can just uh, perform a basic uh, uh, experiment on the best k value using the diabetes data set and that was for today's vi uh, video thanks a lot for watching